After my parents canceled my engagement party without warning to spare my sister's feelings. Now I'm rebuilding boundaries and learning who truly supports me. I, 27F, therefore became involved two weeks ago with Caleb, my five-year lover, 27M, he suggested, and I agreed rather naturally. Among the happiest events of my life was that one. Our family was thrilled when we told them the news, especially my dad, who volunteered to host an engagement party right away. For me, it meant a great deal, as it seemed to be evidence of their love and support. I was looking forward to it, eager to rejoice with everyone, but then things changed dramatically. My parents called off the engagement celebration a few days ago. They just called to let me know it was off. They never even asked beforehand. Their rationale, Penelope, my younger sister, 25F, had recently gone through a breakup, and they felt it would be inappropriate to celebrate my engagement when she was grieving. If they had at least checked in with me before calling off everything, I might not have been as offended. But the fact that they invited me, promised me this great engagement celebration, and then turned out the lights without saying anything to me? That hurts. Maybe I would have been more sympathetic if they had first discussed the matter. But they didn't, and that's what most infuriated me. To be honest, I wouldn't have minded covering the party costs personally. It was not driven by money. The problem was that they promised me something, and subsequently neglected to follow through. Penelope had split up with her boyfriend only a day previously, so they said when they contacted me to cancel that they didn't want to discuss weddings around her since she was heartbroken. Thus, organizing an engagement party for Caleb and me became unexpectedly impossible. The celebration was scheduled for yesterday. The invites had already been delivered a week earlier, but none of it materialized as my parents cancelled all without first contacting me. Indeed, I suffered. Penelope had just been dating for eight months, so maybe it would have made more sense if she had been with her lover for years. She was serious about him, sure, but obviously he wasn't as serious about her. The weirdest thing, Penelope had questioned him whether he intended to get married soon after learning of my engagement, therefore sparking their initial breakup. That most likely scared him, and I really couldn't hold the man responsible for calling off things. Penelope just wouldn't, from what I understood, even though he had urged her to slow things down several times. I thus do not believe that their separation was totally his responsibility. Penelope had to have seen it approaching. When I informed my parents how unhappy I was, I wasn't exactly diplomatic about it since it felt so unjust that my engagement party was called off due to their marital problems. Their excuses for cancelling were plainly foolish and petty, which did not sit well with them. We got into a large fight at the end, and right now we hardly talk at all. I was left in a somewhat annoying position. I had previously sent my parents a guest list for the invites, but now I had to write everyone personally to let them know the party would be permanently postponed. Though I still wanted the party, I now had to organize it from the ground up by myself. It was relentless. Just when I felt things couldn't get worse, they did. You see, we all neglected to invite one vital person. My Aunt Clarissa, 62F. She just uses email for business. She is quite off the grid, not social media nor texting. If you must get in touch with her, you must either phone or physically mail her anything. So we totally forgot to invite her when things exploded with my parents. Clarissa is a strong-willed woman, not someone you want to cross. She ended up turning up to my parents' house the night the party was scheduled to take place. For my dad, she is also quite vital, not just on an emotional but also economical level. My dad has always anticipated being the one to inherit her tremendous legacy. They had talks about it, and my dad always knew he would be the one to inherit her riches when the time came. Now, though, all of that was under threat. Clarissa became enraged with my parents upon learning the reason the party was called off. She told them their conduct was terrible, and she couldn't believe they would treat me this way. She then came right over to my house. I was very glad to see her. Though we don't communicate frequently, Clarissa and I get along great. To me, she has always been more of a mentoring person. Though I had not intended to share with her anything about what had occurred with my parents, she brought it up when she came over. I was startled, as Clarissa and my dad have always been close, at least as far as I knew. She told me straightforwardly that I shouldn't invite my parents to any of my wedding parties since they obviously didn't respect me. She talked up things I had never known when I questioned her why she was saying this. As the eldest sibling, she informed me she had always placed her brothers first, made many sacrifices growing up, and that she was never valued for it. She added that my dad never really made an attempt to remain in touch with her until he needed something, and that pained her greatly. She felt it was her responsibility to care for them, and now she regrets that perspective. She tried to tell herself he was busy with his family, but now that both my sister and I were older, she realized he really didn't care as much as she thought he did. I knew where she was coming from. Penelope and I are grown-ups now. Hence my dad doesn't go out to her nearly as much as he should. It's not like he could use the justification of a busy family anymore. Clarissa also revealed something from their early years that I had not known before. Their middle brother, who died a few years ago, was the favorite child of my grandparents, not her nor my dad. 
Clarissa told me she never received the credit she deserved and felt she had always been pushed aside in favor of her brothers. She wanted me to avoid making the same mistake she did by letting her parents walk all over her. She cautioned me that once you start forgiving someone just because they are family, they start to take advantage of you, and it gets to the point where you cannot turn around. After our talk, I understood I couldn't let this slip past. I had been on the brink of allowing my parents off the hook for calling off the party without an explanation. By the time my wedding arrived, I had been expecting that with my family, things would somehow right themselves. I would have let it go for peace, or I assumed they would apologize. Clarissa, however, made me realize that I wasn't happy with their treatment of me, and that I required them to own and apologize for their actions. That night, I made up my decision. Until they did, I had no desire in having them into my life, let alone my wedding. I told Penelope and my parents that I didn't want them at my wedding until they changed their treatment of me, until they apologized. Until they could own their acts, I advised them to avoid me. Clarissa said she was pleased with me when I told her what I had done the next morning. She advised me to ground myself and resist letting my folks walk all over me. Though I knew it wouldn't be easy, the talk provided me the strength I needed to follow through on my choice. After telling Penelope and my parents the message, I felt both relief and fear. Though part of me couldn't get rid of the impression that this might turn into something much more, I knew what I had done was the correct thing. Finding out didn't take much time. The day after my message, my Aunt Clarissa and I spoke once more. She lived quite far away, so she stayed the night at my house. I wanted her not driving back home late in the evening. Over coffee the next morning, she underlined once more how pleased she was of me for imposing that limit. She also revealed something that made me understand just how profoundly this was impacting her too. Apparently, my dad didn't even attempt to contact her to try to make things right the night she left my parents' house. Clarissa had anticipated some kind of follow-up from him, some form of at least a discussion to help things out, some expression of at least regret. But there was nothing, just total quiet. She was really let down, and as she told me, I could tell that it went beyond the cancellation of the party. It was about years of neglect and unappreciated work. I could really relate to her suffering. Clarissa's affection and encouragement had always seemed taken for granted by my dad. He hardly tried to get in touch with her, and now it felt like the aftermath from this engagement party had reopened old scars for both of us. Later that day, my dad dropped by my door. Though I wasn't specifically surprised either, I wasn't anticipating him. When I answered the door, he started an enraged diatribe before I could even welcome him. He asked whether Clarissa still stayed at my house. She had gone earlier in the morning, I informed him, and when I added how wounded she was that he hadn't even called her following their argument, he lost all sense of reason and began screaming, blaming me for the whole circumstances. He said I had to have been the one poisoning her against him since Clarissa had informed him earlier that day she was thinking twice about leaving him anything in her will. I was shocked when she added that considering his recent actions, she was considering giving her whole inheritance to me instead. I hadn't expected things to go out of hand this fast, and I most definitely hadn't anticipated Clarissa to take such a radical move. But I felt something break inside me as my dad stood there on my porch, accusing me of souring his connection with her. I told him flat out that this was all his responsibility, done with his blaming me for his own deeds. Clarissa was already unhappy with him long before she came to visit me, so I had done nothing to turn her against him. I said nothing to let her realize how little he had put into preserving their connection. His actions, not mine, were the reason she was reevaluating her will today. None of this would have happened if he had merely taken the time to talk to her, apologize, or even recognize how wounded she was. Instead, my dad doubled down. If Clarissa was unhappy with him, he added, it was my duty to get in touch to summon him over so we may all get back on track as a family. He even started weeping. He blamed me for not trying to write things when he had the opportunity to do so the night before. For a few times, I felt bad, as I had never seen my father cry like this before. He kept telling me that canceling the engagement party was not as horrible as what I had allegedly done, and that I had turned the only family he had against him. It was difficult to watch, he said, and I should have contacted him, brought him over, and diffused the matter between him and Clarissa. It hurt to see my father, the guy who had always been so robust and under control, break down there on my doorway. I was aware, though, that shame cannot alter reality. Actually, he was responsible for this disaster. I was not, despite his weeping. I kept my position as he had developed this distance between himself and Clarissa from years of neglect now haunting him. Given his treatment of me, I informed him I was not in charge of repairing his connection with Clarissa. All he had to do was chat with her personally, but he couldn't even be bothered to do that. Not because he truly wanted to make things right with either of us, but rather because he was afraid of losing his inheritance. He came up to my house. My father had no idea how to handle this. He was just astonished and stood there. I suppose it dawned on him at last that I was not going to stop. He went finally, still enraged and disturbed, and I had an odd spectrum of feelings as I watched him go. 
though another side of me couldn't get rid of the shame of seeing my father in such a vulnerable position. Part of me was glad that I had spoken up for myself. The guilt stayed with me all day. I kept going back over the chat in my thoughts, wondering whether I ought to have behaved differently. Perhaps I ought to have brought him inside and attempted to arbitrate between Clarissa and him. But I also realized at the same time that wasn't my duty. He opted not to, even though he had several opportunities to write things. When Caleb returned home that evening, I told him everything. He listened intently, then reassured me I hadn't done anything wrong when I ended. He reminded me that my parents had exacerbated matters with Clarissa and had canceled the engagement party without first informing me. Though I knew Caleb was right, I felt confused, since it wasn't my responsibility to correct their faults. It was difficult to get rid of the thought of my father wailing on my front porch. But the days went by and I gradually came to terms with everything. Just as I thought things were beginning to quiet down, the next tsunami of drama struck. I understood that standing up for myself did not make me the villain in this scenario. It made me someone who was no more ready to be a doormat. Two days later, I began receiving odd phone calls and social media messages from Penelope and my parents. Furious, they said I had turned Clarissa against them. Unbelievably, they believed I had brainwashed her into altering her will. I had not engaged in anything of the kind. Based on years of feeling underappreciated by them, Clarissa had made that decision totally on her own. I disabled their numbers and their social media accounts, but it did not stop them. Trying to get under my skin, they started sending me messages using burner phones and phony accounts. It was tiring. I wasn't sure for me what they wanted. An apology. For what exactly? For defending myself? For not helping to clean their mess? Over this period, Caleb was my rock. He kept telling me that I had behaved morally by establishing limits. I owed them nothing. But the continual abuse was draining me. Like I didn't want to interact with them. I felt as though I was caught in a never-ending loop of family strife after another week of unrelenting texts began to cause me to question Caleb's accuracy. Perhaps my parents hoped I would get in touch with Clarissa and persuade her to atone with them. But I had not intended to do that. They had to mend things with her personally if they wanted them fixed. Given all they had gone through, Clarissa had already informed me she had no intention of forgiving them anytime soon. I was not going to be their go-between. She was done with being taken for granted, and frankly I didn't blame her. She had spent her whole childhood putting my dad and her other brother first, and now that she was older, she saw how much she had given up for people who did not value her. Eventually, my parents stopped attempting to personally get in touch with me, but they did not give up. Rather, they began assembling additional relatives on their side, starting to get calls from aunts, uncles, and cousins, all reaching out to find out what was happening. It was draining trying to tell everyone the truth. Apparently, because my parents had been telling everyone I had purposefully undermined the engagement party, disregarded their desires, and then turned Clarissa against them. After some time, I grew bored with it and chose to clear the record on social media. From the cancelled party, to the disagreement with my parents, to the fallout with Clarissa, I compiled all that had transpired. I made it quite evident that my parents had escalated the matter and that I had not turned her against anybody. I assumed things would cool out once I put the message on social media. I went over everything precisely, including how the engagement party had been called off without my permission, and how my parents, Penelope, and Clarissa's circumstances had turned upside down. Though I expected not everyone would show sympathy, I hoped it would at least stop the spreading of the stories. Sadly, I was mistaken. My parents tightened down instead of things cooling down. They were not happy with only pestering me over burner accounts and phone calls. Now they went public with their charges, getting even more friends and relatives to support their cause. I began getting calls from far-off relatives I hadn't seen in years. Apparently, my parents had been telling people that by not calling off the party for Penelope's sake, I had offended them. Their version claims that I had thrown a fit since they refused to pay for the party. Absurd. Since I never asked them to pay in the first place, I agreed to have them host. They had volunteered. On top of that, they were lying that I had brainwashed Clarissa, turning her against the family, and manipulating her into changing her will to leave everything to me instead of my dad, making it sound like I was some spoiled brat upset because they wouldn't foot the bill. It amazed me. The worst aspect was how many people believed them. It seemed as though I had some kind of great plan to destroy the family, when in fact all I had done was establish limits when they cancelled my engagement party without even asking me. It seemed like I was being ganged up on and that nobody cared to hear my side of the story. Relatives began messaging me saying things like, you need to make things right with your parents, or family comes first no matter what. At first, I attempted to explain things one by one to everybody who contacted me, but it soon became taxing even though I had previously issued a statement. It appeared as though my parents' version of events was disseminating quicker than the reality. People still appeared to support my parents even if I explained that they had called off the party without consulting me, or that I had done nothing to set Clarissa against them. I was the villain. They were presenting themselves as the victims. It got to the point where I couldn't stand it any longer. 
Constant self-defense had emotionally sapped me, and I realized I needed assistance. I decided then to get in touch with Clarissa. I had attempted to keep her away from drawing her more into the drama up to now. She avoided social media, and I wanted to save her the upheaval my parents were causing. But now I saw I needed her to speak up and permanently clear the air. When I contacted Clarissa and told her what was happening, she got enraged. That my parents were disseminating such nasty things about me astounded her. She volunteered right away to straighten the record, though she was resolved to ensure everyone understood the truth. Clarissa informed me she was going to get in touch with my father and face him straightforwardly. I hadn't anticipated her to become involved so fast. She wanted to be clear. His conduct was driving her away, not anything I had said or done. A few hours later, Clarissa contacted me back to let me know she had spoken with my father. She also informed me she would have to take my father out of her life entirely if his lying continued. She said the talk went poorly, insisting that I was the one to blame. My father refused to take ownership for anything. If Clarissa was offended by him, he asserted, it had to be due to something I said. Clarissa tried to explain that her sentiments toward him had been developing for years owing to his negligence, but he would not listen to reason. Finally, Clarissa told him she was severing relations with him. She wanted not to be associated with someone who could not acknowledge their faults or even show any regard for her emotions. She also told him she formally had modified her will. Like my father had feared, everything would now fall to me. I was startled when Clarissa informed me of this. Though I knew why she did, I had not anticipated her to take actions that far. She had been carrying years of bitterness, and this entire scenario had been the trigger. Beyond the engagement celebration, Clarissa wanted everyone else in the family to know the truth. Decades of feeling underappreciated and mistreated by my father, notwithstanding the conflict with her father. She made the decision to establish a Facebook account just to share a video outlining her version of the events. Though initially I was reluctant as I wanted her not to get sucked into the anarchy of social media. Clarissa released the video the next day, and it was like a bomb went off in the family. She claimed that if my parents were going to discredit me in public, she would defend me in public. She gently walked through everything in the video. She discussed how my father had mistreated her for years, how my parents had called off the engagement party without consulting me, and how their present actions had simply confirmed her determination to change. The family responded right away, making it quite evident that I had done nothing to sway her and that the decision was hers and hers alone. People who had been supporting my parents were suddenly reaching out to say apologies. They claimed to have just heard my parents' warped version of events and to have not known the whole truth. Many of them showed their support for me when their eyes were opened by Clarissa's film. It felt as though a weight had been taken off my shoulders. I sensed people really listening to me and understanding my viewpoint for the first time since this entire thing started. About my parents, they fell silent. Clarissa's film had straightened the record and it was obvious most of the family now knew who was truly in the wrong. They stopped attempting to get in touch me after Clarissa's video. Presumably in order to avoid the reaction from the rest of the family, they even disabled their social media accounts. It eased me. It felt like I could breathe once more, first in weeks. Caleb and I discussed everything that had transpired and decided that after the dust cleared, we would remove the social media postings we had created on the matter. Constant harassment, accusations, rumors, all of which stopped. The truth was out, hence we saw no need to maintain the blogs anymore. Clarissa also informed me she intended to erase her Facebook account in a few days. We were ready to go on and concentrate on what truly mattered. Our wedding. She had just established it to clear the record and now that her message was out, she wanted no part in the internet drama. I could agree more than anything else. Clarissa offered me one final piece of advice before she went. The negativity had been dragging on both of us, and we were ready to let it go. She advised me not to feel pressured to accept my parents back into my life, even if they tried to reach out and offer apologies. She advised me to act in my best interests and that, should it involve severing relationships with them permanently, then so be it. Family doesn't get a free pass to harm you over and over just because they're family. Her words really speak to me, and for the first time I felt calm about things. As the weeks went by, the turmoil with my parents gradually subsided. Caleb, Clarissa and other family members who had shown me they were on my side, always understood that regardless of what occurred with my parents. Though I occasionally got the odd note from distant cousins, generally things had calmed down. Since Clarissa's video went public, my parents and Penelope hadn't contacted me. They had disabled their social media accounts. With the family turmoil on hold, I was finally able to concentrate on my wedding. It seemed like I was starting to realize I wouldn't be allowing them to walk all over me or bow to their needs. From picking decor to finishing the guest list, Caleb and I had a lot on our plate. I immersed myself in the preparations and for the first time in what felt like decades, I was thrilled once more. Though whatever had occurred with my family, I was resolved to make the wedding a joyful and celebratory day. The wedding was just a few weeks away, and I could not get rid of a residual grief. My parents and sister would not be at my wedding, no matter how hard I tried to overlook it. Every time I considered walking down the aisle, 
My dad not being there entered my thoughts. It was a mixed bag sensation. Still, part of me wanted them there despite all. One afternoon, I spoke with Clarissa about the other side of me, that their existence would only cause more suffering and drama should things not be corrected. Over the last few months, we had grown considerably closer and I now think more highly of her counsel. Clarissa listened attentively as I told her how I was feeling, that even with the grief they had caused, I still mourned my family, and that part of me still yearned things to be different. She stared at me in the eye and said something I will never forget after I finished. She assured me missing them was natural. Though they had hurt me, it was reasonable to be depressed over their disappearance. She also reminded me that although sometimes missing someone doesn't imply you need them back in your life, rather, I had made the correct decision in sticking up for myself. Her comments stayed with me, as family may also refer to the individuals who really support you, care about you, and love you unreservedly rather than the ones who share your blood. I understood then that even though I would always feel lost for the relationship I previously had with my parents and Penelope, it did not mean I had to accept them back into my life should they not respect me. With that clarity, I decided to proceed with my wedding preparations, knowing that even though my family's presence would not be there, I would still have the people who really mattered by my side. She loved me without conditions and treated me with the respect I deserved. Clarissa had taught me what actual family looked like, and Caleb had been my support all through this whole process. For me, it was plenty. As the wedding day drew near, I carefully made sure Penelope and my parents were not listed on the invitations. Knowing they wouldn't be there was unusual, but it also felt like the appropriate thing to do. Following all that had transpired, I was unable to see how to have them present without revisiting past hurts. The day the wedding came arrived, and despite all the family strife, everything was lovely. I wasn't ready to forgive them yet if ever, and I knew inviting them would just lead to more issues. Friends and relatives who loved us surrounding Caleb and me, and the ceremony ran without a hitch. I had a moment when I stood by myself, absorbing everything, and for the first time in a very long time, I felt calm. Though Penelope and my parents were absent, I felt less of their absence than I would have imagined. Rather, I sensed the great love and encouragement of the individuals present, more than enough. Clarissa, as always, was a rock of strength. She made a sincere toast during the reception. And as she spoke, I could see pride in her eyes. She had been my mentor, advisor, and defender along this whole journey. I knew I wouldn't have made it through so powerfully without her. After the wedding, everything started to calm down. Though our daily schedule was restored, things were different now. Caleb and I, in the months preceding the wedding, I had discovered so much about my family and myself. A few weeks after the wedding, I received an uninvited call. I had come to understand the need for establishing limits, defending myself, and appreciating the people who really loved me. Penelope provided it. She hadn't spoken in months, and I wasn't sure whether I was ready to approach her, but curiosity won out and I responded. Penelope sounded softer and more subdued. She said she was sorry for everything. She said she hadn't thought about how her behavior had affected me since she had been consumed with her own problems. It was unusual to hear her regret not being at the wedding and missing having me in her life after all this time. I felt nothing at all. I told her I appreciated her apology, but that I needed time to reflect. Part of me wanted to accept her apologies and attempt to mend our relationship, but another part of me was still wounded and cautious of allowing her back into my life. Trust couldn't be rebuilt overnight, and I wasn't sure whether I was ready to pardon her yet. Penelope appeared to grasp, and she refrained from pushing. She said she hoped we might get back in touch soon and we left it there. Regarding my parents, I never heard from them, not specifically either. A few relatives said they still felt offended about everything and had not come to grips with what had transpired. By then, though, I was not anticipating an apology from them any longer. I had relocated on. Looking back, I see that occasionally sticking up for yourself means losing people you thought you could never live without. I had built a new family with Caleb and Clarissa, and that was what counted most. It entails letting go of the relationships that damage you, even if they are with your own family. But it also means acquiring something far more valuable. Self-respect, inner tranquility, and the fortitude to establish your own life on your own terms. I have no idea what the future holds with my parents and Penelope. Perhaps one day we will get back in harmony. Alternatively, maybe we won't. I do know, though, that I now give the individuals who really love me first priority. For that, I will also always be appreciative. 